Oh my gosh. What, what, what the heck? Hello and welcome back to yet another rod video. As you can see, today I will be fishing with the Ducket Crappie Slayer, and I'm really excited to put this thing to the test on some big old slab crappie. That being said, in my last video, you might have seen that I actually just caught a big catfish on this thing, so at the bare minimum, we already know that it holds up to random big catfish. Either way, you know the drill. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the specs, I'm gonna be talking about all the details of this rod, and then at the end of this video, after catching hopefully a ton of fish, I will wrap up my thoughts on whether or not this is a good rod for you. So without further ado, let's get started. As far as the specs go, I would usually just look at the rod, but in this case, it actually doesn't have all the details, so I have to look online. This is a six foot six light power rod, moderate fast action, line weight two to eight pounds, lure weight 116 to 316. So definitely the specs that you would expect for a typical crappie setup. Um, I went for the six foot six. I just wanted something that kind of mid-range length. I went ahead and paired it up with a size 2000 Daiwa reel. This is the Legalis. And as you can see, it pairs up quite nicely. Look at that balance. That's about what you want right there, my friend. So I would say, typically speaking, a six foot six crappie stick, you probably are gonna want probably a size 2000 reel to pair it up and it does extremely well with this reel right here. Um, I've got this reel spooled up with some six pound braid, and then I think a six pound copolymer leader, if I remember correctly. Um, all in all, I am going to be using this specifically for crappie fishing. I'm really gonna focus in on crappie fishing because at the end of the day, it is called the crappie slayer. So this is truly meant to be a crappie rod. Um, so I am going to focus on crappie fishing. First up, I'm gonna start with a 332nd ounce pink mule jig with a mule minnow 2.2 in the Dakota Sunrise color. I'm probably going to switch because I think I need a downsize to probably a 1 16th ounce jig, but I'm just gonna start with this because this is what's rigged up. Literally, first drop. Are you kidding me? Yes, sir. Okay, well, there you go, there's the rod. And they call this a moderate fast. Oh my gosh, that's a big crappie. No! Daggummit, I was dinking around trying to play with the rod and I did not land what was absolutely a tankzilla. Nice slab, that was probably a 13 incher. Now I'm actually shooting this jig and I'm probably gonna do that a lot because I'm gonna be fishing primarily around docks. When I'm crappie fishing, I typically like to have just a little bit more length. I'd say six foot six or seven foot is kind of my sweet spot um, because I feel like with crappie fishing, a lot of times you're fishing over deeper water and I like being able to move line. I also do a lot of pendulum technique. So basically I, I'll cast the jig out and I'll literally like swing it back to me with a tight line. And that's a really effective technique for crappie. So anyways, a six foot six rod I felt like would be a nice little middle point. I feel like that's a pretty common length for crappie fishing. Kind of allows you to do a little bit of everything. I totally just missed a fish right there. Rather than mess around with this 332nd ounce mule jig, which is one of my confidence jigs for crappie fishing, because I'm a fishing in shallower, dirtier water, I'm gonna go ahead and switch down to a 1 16th. I have a lot more confidence in that. I also want a chartreuse color as opposed to a pink. This dirty water, I think the chartreuse will be just a little bit better. There's one. Oh man, that's gonna be a catfish, daggummit. Oh wait, no, it is a crappie. He was just around a post and that's a nice one. There you go. I've caught three catfish today, so I'm just kinda, I'm just nervous we're gonna catch more. Not that I don't like catching them, but today's focus is crappie. There you go, my friends. Duck it, crappie slayer. Nice little crappie. It's probably like a 10 and a half incher. Nice little slab. He was in there between about three dock posts. And so he was tight to cover, that's for sure. All right, let's try that again, see if he's got a buddy in there. Oh my gosh, that one took off with it. All of a sudden I reeled down and I had slack. I might need to tighten my drag a little. Oh, is that, a, what is that? Is that a crappie? I think it's a white perch. No, it is a crappie. That's a nice crappie. Dag gum, this one just took off with it. Holy smokes. Okay, this is a nice fish right here, my friends. This is a real nice fish right here. That's what you call a slab. When they got a mouth like that, that's called a slab. It's probably like a 12 incher. There we go. Get a quick measurement on this fish because that's a very respectable one. He was right there in the same spot as that last fish and he absolutely took off with that thing. That's a, he's over 12 inches. He's probably 12 and a quarter. Nice crappie, my friends. See you, buddy. Lives to fight another day. If you're wondering about this dock shooting technique, just watch my most recent video because that's exactly what it's all about. 
And I'm telling you, that's a technique that you got to know, especially if you're a crappie fisherman. So if you're interested in crappie fishing, you definitely got to have that technique dialed in because it is a must have for crappie fishing, as you can see. And there you go. There we go, my friends. Another respectable slab. Okay. Well, there's certainly a group of them right here, right all in the same spot. They're all kind of balled up right in between all these posts. It's always funny to me how there can always be such sweet spots for crappie fishing on docks. You know, you make the same cast 10 times in a row and you catch a fish every time. That fish thumped it. My line jumped. It's another respectable one. But it's like this little sweet spot. I fished around this whole dock and this is the spot that is paying off with numerous bites. And it's probably because there's some kind of brush pile or something down there. But there's just something about that spot that those fish like. I mean, obviously it's in between a bunch of posts, which helps too. That one's a little bit smaller, but it's a crappie nonetheless, and that's what today's video is all about. Crappie fishing with a crappie rod. I want to be clear as well. You see that I'm using this bright green line. You know I've talked about this a lot if you've been watching my videos, but I was extremely intentional about the fact that I'm using bright green, high visibility, six pound braid. When it comes to crappie fishing, high vis line is so advantageous. That last fish I caught is because my line just jumped. If I couldn't see my line, you know, if I was using like four pound mono and it was just clear, it'd be much harder to see that line jump. But in that case, you know, that line jumps and it's super, super helpful to see that line when it's that high vis. That's a nice one. And that's a nice one. Ooh, look how fat that fish is. My Lord, Lord have mercy on this fish. Holy cannoli. They're feeding up on something. We're talking about midsummer, and this fish looks like it's an absolute girthy fatty my gosh look at that fat girl there you go love to see it just love to see it this rod comes in right at 70 dollars, so i'd say like a nice mid-range i'd say 70 dollars is a pretty attractive price point when it comes to like crappie specific gear you know there's a lot of rods on the market that are around the hundred dollar range and for 70 bucks i feel like so far i'm really a big fan of this rod i definitely feel like it is performing a little bit above its price range so as mentioned within the specs, this is called a moderate fast. And I gotta say, I like this moderate fast. It is probably a little bit closer to a fast than a moderate, but I'll tell you what, this is like a sweet spot right here. I think they nailed it for crappie fishing. It gives me enough of a fast tip to where I can bury the hook, but it's not quite so fast to where you're pulling the hooks out of the fish's mouths. So far on the fish that I've hooked, I've felt pretty darn good about it. I feel like I'm really driving the hook home, but it's a soft enough blank to where once you hook them, you're not just totally torching their lips. And that's important for crappie because they obviously have those thin mouths. As far as the aesthetics and some of the details go, it has a little hook keeper. It's actually just like a little clip type. I actually really like that. It's below the reel to where you're not dealing with line tangling it at all. And I feel like it's totally out of the way. The one thing that I did notice, you know, this is a light rod. It's a little bit thicker from a blank standpoint, but I don't necessarily feel like it's much heavier. I feel like it feels quite comfortable. Um, obviously it's white, so it's a little bit more flashy. And then it's got a foam grip. So it's like this like EVA type foam, um, very simple, you know, very simple plastic reel seat. Definitely, you know, for a $70 rod, this is probably about typical, pretty standard. Nothing fancy necessarily, but it's comfortable to fish with. If it had just a little bit more foam on top, just to kind of have a little finger rest, I wouldn't be necessarily mad at that. But all in all, I'd say it's pretty darn comfortable to fish with. The biggest thing is that it balances. And for me, if a rod balances well, you know, especially a six foot six rod with a size 2000 reel, I feel like that's perfect. You know, if it's balancing well, then I'm comfortable. And that is definitely a huge box to check in my eye and this one checks the box. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm thinking we're gonna probably catch the most of our fish on the middle of every dock, right where there's the most shade and the most posts. That's what we found on the first one. And I'm willing to bet that that's what we're gonna find on the next one too. But right there, that one was right on the front of the dock. That's another nice little slab. Nothing, nothing giant by any means, but another quality fish. And you know, I'm feeling most of these fish, I'd say in the line, but I've definitely felt them in the rod too. You know, for a $70 rod, I'm not necessarily mad about the sensitivity. You know, I'm feeling these bites as good as I would ever need to, I think. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What is this gonna be? It's gonna be a big slab, I think. Oh, wait, no, this is not gonna be a crappie. <laughs> I bet you that's one of them catfish we've been talking about. Daggummit. Oh, daggummit. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. 
Oh my goodness. These catfish have been, no, he popped off. He popped off. Well, that'll happen, you know, he was torching. Yeah, you can tell he was definitely a catfish. Look at my line. When, that, when you have a bunch of slime on your line, that's a pretty good indicator of what that species was. Daggum, ew. I've got just a big ball of slime on there now, ugh. I'm thinking they might be spawning, I'm not sure. It feels late to spawn, but we're up here in Michigan. They might spawn a little bit later than most places. Gosh dang it, are you kidding me? What is going on? What is going on? Oh, that wasn't even, what? What? That wasn't even a catfish and he took off like a madman. That's bonkers, dude. I thought that was gonna be a big catfish, but that was just a really crazy aggressive crappie that took off. I mean, I might need to tighten my drag a little, but quite honestly, it's not that, it's not that loose. That fish is just a meanie. That was one mean crappie, dude. He's been taking lessons from the catfish. Another one. That one did not take off like the last one because he's absolutely micro. But he bit in the exact same location. I might have found another sweet spot. See, hey, buddy. Another one. Oh, jeez, Louise. This, there's no way. Is this really a crappie? Jeez, they are fighting hard. Holy smokes. Oh, that's a big one. It's a nice one. Oh, man. It's amazing how hard some of these fish are hitting. That's another slabby. Man, that fish thumped the crap out of it. He just rattled down the line. I don't care who you are. If you don't like crappie fishing next to docks, you're crazy. Whew, there's another fish. Dang, that fish, what the heck? Oh my goodness. Well, if it's crappie, it's a world record. Okay, he has got me up against that post. I can just feel my line getting torched. Daggum it, mister. Get out from that stuff. He's got me around a post, maybe a brush pile. I don't know. I feel something. If this fish doesn't break me off, I don't know what's happening. Oh my gosh, he's got me like wrapped. This is going to be a big catfish. Yeah, he's got me like down in something. He's like not even moving now. He's either got me fully wrapped or he's around a brush pile. I'm gonna have to kind of horse him. There we go, got him, got him. Now I'm gonna head to open water. I'll fight you in open water and I will win. You might win when you're around the docks and stuff, but I'll beat you in open water, my friend. Well, I guess this is a good, uh, good time to take a look at that rod. And look at that flex, man. It's handling these big fish just fine. Just fine. You just don't want to horse them. I had to horse them a little just to get them away from the dock, but now that I got them in open water, take my sweet time if I have to. Like right now, he's giving me some, he's giving me all he's got, that's for sure. So I'm gonna let him give it, and then I'm gonna ease him up when he gives me a chance. But I'm not gonna fight my drag. If he's pulling drag, I'll let him pull drag. I've got plenty of line on here. Got more line than I ever need. And he's gonna give me some ground. It's kind of like watching them saltwater videos where people, they'll winch on them for a bunch and then they'll let them run and then they winch on them. It's kind of the same principle. Just a little bit smaller fish and a lot smaller line. Gil, bless ya, look at that catfish. Golly, these catfish are just putting in work today. Look at that cat. Not what I was planning for. Well, this rod will hold up to some pressure, that's for sure. Good deal. The mule minnow, my friends, catfish like it. Look at you, buddy. Hey, 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 just chill. Gimme. It's amazing how they have got such hard parts of their mouth. There we go, I got it. I didn't even have to bend the hook at all. Good deal. That's a nice catfish, my friends. How about them apples? Here, kitty, kitty. <laughs> See ya, kitty. Ugh, I've got slime all over my fingers. Ugh. I think I've landed like four catfish today, and I definitely missed another one. These fish are nuts, man. They're fun. They're definitely fun. It wasn't what I was expecting, but I'll certainly take it. You know I'm a multi-species fan. 
and uh, they put some serious pressure on that rod, but it held up just fine. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the Ducket Crappie Slayer, that's for sure. All right, after all that fighting, I'm going to have to check my line. Well, one thing's for certain. It's got slime on it. It's got no shortage of slime on it. Question is, how frayed up is it? Is it abrasion? There's definitely some abrasion. Oh, man. Oh, geez. The first foot of my leader, if not more. How much leader line do I have? That fish torched my leader line. This calls for a retie. So I'm looking at their warranty policy online and I'm not 100% sure I'm interpreting things correctly, but from what I can gather, it seems that this has a full warranty for the first year after purchase. There's a chance it has a little bit of a limited warranty for the next four years after that. But all in all, I'd say a full warranty for the first year is pretty good. I mean, you're talking about a $70 rod. Um, and so far, I mean, it's been holding up quite well to these big fish. We've put it to the test on some solid fish. We've put it under some serious pressure and it's had no issues. So I wouldn't necessarily be super concerned about that. I feel like if a rod is going to break and it has a manufacturer defect, it'll probably break within the first year. If it takes over a year for the rod to break and it's been fished with a lot, that tells me that something probably happened along the way. That's my guess. That's my gut instinct. Um, but either way, I felt that that was necessary to share. You know, the one thing I'll call out is for 70 bucks, I'd say it's living up to the sensitivity I would expect. You know, there's definitely cases like this, right? Where I just actually hooked a fish because I pulled up on my jig, but I actually didn't feel the bite. Um, that's funny how that timing worked out. And I think that's another catfish based on everything that's happening right now. Um, either way though, I guess I've had a couple bites where it's like, I just kind of pull up on them. And I feel like on a certain other rods that are maybe a little bit higher end, I would probably feel the bite in my rod blank. In this case, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think this rod is doing just fine. I don't think you need like the most sensitive, most fancy rod in the world to do what I'm doing. Um, but it's something worth noting. Just totally depends on price range and what you're looking for in a piece of equipment. If this was my straight up crappie setup, I wouldn't be mad at all. I think it does just fine. Why, why, look at this, look at this rod, look at this rod. If it snaps right now, then we really have learned something. I hope it doesn't, because I'm actually really digging it and I want to fish with this thing more in the future. But look at that, look at that rod. Oh my Lord, look at that rod. I mean, I've got my drag, I think appropriately set and this thing is getting doubled over. Whoo, baby. I could have made a freaking mess of fish tacos between all these catfish and crappie. My dad is sitting there looking at this video saying, Ethan, son, what the heck are you doing? Where did I go wrong as a father? Why don't you make me more fish tacos, son? Huh? That's what my dad's thinking. Oh, Lord. I actually don't think I would want to deal with catfish. I don't know. I'm sure, I mean, fried catfish is delicious, but I don't want to deal with these big slimy critters anyways. The crappie, I'd be, I'd be happy to clean a crappie, but these guys, I don't know. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's not a catfish, it's a drum. It's a drum. <laughs> yes. Yes. I thought it was going to be a catfish. Holy smokes. Okay. Looky there, folks. Mm. They don't like being lipped. Ah. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Drum. That is an absolute tank of a drum. You love to see it, folks. You love to see it. All right, let's get them on the board. That is a 20, that is a 24 inch drum, my friends. 24 inch drum. Going back, see a bud. He's got slime all over my board. I've got slime all over my pants. I've got slime everywhere. Ugh. He fought even harder than the catfish. Daggum. One thing is for certain, my friends, we have put the duck at Crappie Slayer to work and we have absolutely tested it out. We've tested it out on the appropriate species and we've tested it out on some bonus species. Today is fun, folks. Today is fun. Oh my gosh. What, what, what the heck? This has got to be a pike this time, I bet. Oh my gosh. Why is this happening to me? How? Okay, if I land this fish, then I am an absolute legend. This one's way under there. He's taking a lot of drag and like long runs. 
I'm feeling like this is probably a pike. Look at this. Look at this. I don't think this one's going to be landed, my friends. I don't think this one's going to be landed. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm going to do my best. Uh, this fish is in a very dangerous location. Golly, whatever happened to the crappie? The crappie bite has gone away, and I am just catching mondo crazy fish now. Okay, I don't know, it's probably not a pike because it's got too much weight. And it's like, on its, it's not necessarily like, I feel like pike, I feel like pike fight different than this. It's probably another drum. It could be a catfish, who knows. Carp, so many possibilities. It's probably a catfish based on the percentages, based on the, the way today's gone. Why is my kayak turning this way? I gotta get my paddle out. Okay, this is, ah, crap. This fish has got me all sorts of jacked up here. Okay, this is not how you wanna fight this fish. My angle is all messed up. My angle is all sorts of jacked. Turn, turn, kayak, turn. I gotta get turned around, there we go. Of course, now I'm up against this pole. Folks, hopefully you learn a thing or two about landing giant fish on light gear today. What not to do, what to do. The goal is to keep them away from the posts. The goal is to get them into open water, but when you have a fish that is underneath two docks, way, way, way away from you, there's only so much you can do. This fish is definitely over a couple of crossbars or something because I'm feeling, I'm feeling my line tick up against stuff. If I land this fish, I'm telling you, it's impressive. I don't know what's gonna happen here. The fact that he's still on is very exciting. I just don't know what it is. And also, I think my back camera died, so unfortunately we're just rocking the head cam. Oh man, he's giving up, he's giving up. I think he's getting tired. This fish is getting tired, I just don't know what it is. He's high in the water column and he's not super far away anymore. Let's see what he is, come on. He's still under the dock, but I think, okay, I think I've got him out. This is gonna be a catfish, I'm thinking. Okay, we're in open water now. Now it should be game over, as far as I'm concerned. Don't give him, don't let him do that. No, 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 don't let him do that. There's one post, keep him away from that post, Ethan. <gasps> it's a giant catfish. It's a giant catfish. It's a giant catfish, biggest of the day. Lord have mercy on these fish. My arm is feeling it. My forearm is getting worked. All right, I can put this paddle away, keep pressure on him because he's 500 pounds or so he feels. Daggum, northern catfish are just beasts. I'm up here in Michigan catching a big old cat. Daggum. Oh. Okay, Mr. Net, you want to get slimy again? I want you to. Can't fight him this far and not catch him. Oh my lord, that's a good fish. That's a good cat. Look at that. That's the biggest Michigan catfish I've ever caught. Uh, I, I don't know if I've ever even caught a bigger catfish in general. Growing up in Kansas, I'd catch them sometimes, but I can't say I ever really targeted them much. That's a tank. Whoo! Well, the mule minnow will catch just about anything, my friends. That's, that's what I've learned today. You gotta give me some credit, my friends. Landing this fish underneath two docks. I gotta get a quick, I gotta get a measurement on this fish. I gotta do it. We're gonna put the board right across the front of the kayak. He's probably gonna flop off and that's okay. But I can't not get one. Yeah. I attempted. <laughs> Tag gum it. <laughs> that was poor handling. He uh, kind of jabbed me a little bit and then it kind of freaked me out and I, I let go. That was, ah, dag gum it. I feel like he would have been he was all of that 24. He would have been 26, 27 inches probably. I don't know, that's a guess. Shoot, that was a giant. Oh, that was a lot of work. Why, why? <laughs> I have to leave this area. <laughs> this doesn't feel as big, but it's not small. It's not as big as that last fish though, so that's good. All right, I gotta go to a new area. 
because I just, I think I gotta go find more crappie. And clearly there's just a lot more large fish in this area. I mean, I don't know why necessarily. It's very similar to the stuff I was catching crappie on, but for some reason these last several docks, they're just loaded with giant, giant catfish and stuff. <laughs> not to say I'm not having fun. This is fun, this is very fun. I just like crappie, man. The crappie bite, there's something about it. Oh my gosh. I'll tell you though, this rod, you know, the guides are all in good shape. The blank's doing fine. It's handling these big surprise fish well. So it'll obviously hold up just fine to typical crappie fishing applications. Man, this is awesome, man. This is awesome. What are you gonna be? Are you another cat or are you a drummy? I think you're a cat. I think you're a cat. Here, Mr. Cat. I'm getting to the point where I'm trying to horse this fish. I need to really back off. He's circling a bunch. You see him? It's because he's rolling. Those catfish, they'll kind of roll when they fight, and that's what this fish is doing. You can watch my line, and you'll kind of see it go in little circles. Like right now, he's rolling. He just kind of blurb, blurb. Oh, Lord. I do actually think that that last channel catfish was my biggest channel catfish of my life. And it's not saying much because I just haven't really catfished that much. But honestly, it was a really respectable fish. And for up here in Michigan, I'd have to imagine that was a, that was a nice one, I would think. I'm pretty sure it was a channel. I think. I think these are all channel catfish. You know, it's funny. This actually brings back memories, too. You know, when I used to work in high school, I worked for a, a local fishing guide, and I painted fishing lures for him. And there was this like, there's this stretch of the year where the channel catfish get up on the banks and they spawn. And we would go up and basically just bass fish for channel catfish. We would go throw worms and crankbaits and stuff and they would hammer them. And we got to do that a time or two. And he took me out on the boat. It was awesome. And I, I tell you, I think like a lot of times like people that love bass fishing, they don't always give other species the credit they deserve. And for me today, I'm obviously focused on crappie. I'm kind of talking a lot about crappie. But we need to embrace the bite that we get. That's what I say. I say, embrace the bite, my friends. Embrace the bite. What you get is a good thing. Catching fish of all kinds can be fun, especially when they're big like this and they're putting up an absolute massive fight. I mean, this is, like, who could complain about this? I mean, I get it. If you're after crappie and the fish keep biting like this, it can be like, wow, this is keeping me from my crappie. But man, just embrace it and enjoy it because this is a blast. Whew. All right, let's see what you got. Who are you? Who are you? What are you? How large are you? You can't be as big as the last one I caught, but you are not wanting to come up, that is for sure. He just will not come up. <sighs> and there you go. That's what the rod looks like under a full load. That's what she looks like, my friends. You know what else? This is definitely a testament to my leader knots. I always just, a lot of people ask me what leader knots I tie from braid to like the copolymer leader. And I just do a double uni. I do five wraps braid, four wraps of the copolymer because it's a little thicker in diameter and it works like a charm. And as you can see, I mean, we put it to the test plenty today and not once have we lost a leader. So I have nothing but confidence in it. It goes through the guides just fine. And uh, it's a good little setup. Oh, he's tail hooked. I didn't intend this to happen. Every other fish has eaten it, but this is a big catfish that is literally tail hooked, which is why he's got so much ability to just swim away because he's got all the leverage in the world. It's always so much harder to net fish when you have them tail hooked like this because their head wants to swim down and you can't get under the head with your net. So this is gonna be a pain in the butt. Mm. This, I don't even know. Get in the net. There we go. Okay. Holy smokes. <sighs> well, obviously not an intentional move. Not what you want to do. But it is what it is. It's outside of your control when you fish. Stuff like this will happen. What I want to do is make sure that this fish gets revived properly. That is an absolute mondo. Holy smokes. Probably about the same size as the last one, I imagine. Holy smokes, look at that fish, dude. He's beautiful. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let him sit in the water in my net. 
and just kind of chill for a few seconds. Just kind of get revived a little bit, relax. All right, buddy, just get take in the water. You're good. I gotta take a quick break after that fish. My gosh, you guys gotta give me a little bit of credit for being able to land these massive fish under docks. I tell you what, I was planning to just test this duck it out, hopefully catch, you know, 10 to 12 crappie that were a decent size, but instead I am catching a bunch of massive slimy creatures and it is amazing. It is so fun. I've put a huge flex in this rod and I gotta be honest, you know, before I get back to fishing, I gotta say, I really do like this rod. I don't think it's the most sensitive rod in the world, but it's $70 and I think it's just as sensitive as anything else in that price range. I think it's really, really, you know, built for crappie fishing applications. I feel like it's great for this, you know, dock shooting that I've been doing, but I think that I would be super comfortable, you know, penduluming a jig over deep water or fishing deep brush piles or fishing a slip float rig. I think that this rod honestly will be able to handle just about any technique that I would like to use for crappie. So I would say if you're looking for a crappie specific rod, I would consider this. I think for 70 bucks, it's a good stick. And I'll definitely be hanging onto this thing because I've enjoyed fishing with it. And the, I don't know, I've never been much of like a white rod guy, but I think it kind of looks cool. So that's, you know, that's a plus. Anyways, I'm gonna take a quick breather. I'm gonna eat a little snack, try to regain some energy. And I'm hopefully going to close the day out with some more crappie. As much fun as these big fish are, I kind of just want to catch the smaller species right now. I'm getting worn out, my friends. Woo! <laughs> this is too much of a pattern at this point. No matter where I go, I just keep hooking these fish. When will it up? Oh, he broke. He broke my braid. He straight broke my braid. I bet you that the abrasion caught up with me. I was thinking earlier that it wouldn't surprise me if that eventually happened. And there you go. That's a clean cut of the braid. That's not even where my leader line was. I bet you I had a little abrasion spot. I'm not even that mad. I mean, I'm sad that there's a jig in that fish's mouth. I trust that that small light wire hook will come out no issues. But I'm mostly just, just relieved I don't have to fight another fish for 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, so I'm sure that fish will be okay, but I do feel a little bad. There's not a whole lot I could do there. I mean, ultimately I probably need to bring these setups home and just really look at the line because there's probably some abrasion at certain points on this braid. And braid, you know, if you rub it up against stuff too long, it's gonna snap and that's just the way it goes. All right, well, different rod, different type of fish. It's my first bass of the day quality fish. There's one. It's got to be a crappie. That's got to be a crappie. Or is it a bass? What is this? What is this? Oh, it's another bass. I don't know why this dock has a bunch of bass on it, but I like it. I like it. It's a nice change of pace. There you go. Another fish. There we go. Oh, that's not a crop. Oh, that's a crappie. Yes, sir. Oh, that's a nice crappie. That's a nice one. Oh, there you go. Well, we ended the day with the right species. I think that's probably our sign to go home. We got the right species to call it a day.